It begins with a radar blip over Eastern Europe. Just a small object, maybe a test missile or a civilian satellite malfunctioning, but it's flying at high speed toward Russian airspace during a time of high political tension. Russian early warning systems, already on hair trigger alert due to NATO exercises in Poland, interpret it as a possible first strike. The Russian president is notified. He has just minutes to decide whether it's a false alarm or the opening salvo of a NATO nuclear attack, and he hesitates. Memories of the Cold War haunt his mind, but with pressure from military advisors, fearing decapitation of command, he authorizes a limited retaliatory strike to preserve deterrence. Three minutes later, Russian submarines launch six nuclear missiles, targeting Warsaw, Berlin, and, and London. The US and NATO detect the launches and believing Moscow has initiated a surprise attack, respond in kind. The US president is rushed to a secure location and gives the go ahead for a counter strike, fearing that not responding would risk obliteration. Within 15 minutes, American ICBMs are in the air heading toward Moscow, St. Petersburg, military command centers deep in the Urals, and secondary Chinese targets mistakenly believed to be in coordination with Russia. China, seeing its early warning system light up and fearing that it's being targeted next, unleashes its own nuclear arsenal toward US West Coast cities like Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Seattle. In less than 30 minutes, over 500 warheads are flying through the upper atmosphere, air defense systems scramble, but nothing can stop the sheer volume. By the time the first missile hits, it's too late to reverse course. London is vaporized in seconds, nearly nine million people dead instantly. Moscow becomes a crater, 12 million lives erased. New York, Washington DC, and Chicago are annihilated. Tokyo, Paris, and Istanbul burn in the first hour. Over 100 major cities across the globe are reduced to radioactive ash. Immediate casualties reach 300 million with tens of millions more injured, blinded, or burned. But that's just the beginning. Fires rage uncontrollably, merging into firestorms that suck in oxygen and release soot into the upper atmosphere. In less than a week, smoke and ash from burning cities begin to block out sunlight globally, triggering what scientists call a nuclear winter. Average global temperatures drop by 8 to 10 degrees Celsius. Devastating agriculture worldwide, crops fail. Livestock perish. The world enters a famine unlike anything in human history. Within a year, up to 5 billion people could die, not from blasts, but from starvation and disease. Radiation spreads silently, contaminating water sources and turning entire regions uninhabitable for decades. The global economy collapses, no internet, no transport, no supply chains, governments fall. Civil unrest becomes the new normal. People begin fighting for clean water, for food, for shelter. 
survivors in rural areas may last longer, but with no medicine, no fuel, and no infrastructure, society reverts to a brutal medieval state. And all of it, all of it began with a single blip on a radar screen, one misread signal, one rushed decision. The terrifying truth in Earth is that in a world with over 12,000 nuclear weapons spread across nine nations, many on high alert, this is not a fictional scenario. It's a very real risk. It's happened before, nearly. In 1983, Soviet officer Stanislav Petrov chose not to report a false alarm, preventing a likely global war. In 1995, a Norwegian scientific rocket was mistaken by Russia for a nuclear missile. So far, we've been lucky, but luck is not a strategy. Nuclear war is not just a cinematic ending to the world. It's a fragile, terrifying possibility that can unfold in under an hour, leaving behind centuries of devastation. The time to act is now. Diplomacy and de-escalation aren't just idealistic. They're survival, because once the missiles launch, there is no pause button, no redo, no next level, only silence.